Hi, this is Noah. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you quickly how to um, how our bearing assemblies work on the 90 foot long rail cars. And so here in this window here, you can see this is a, a pretty typical 90 foot long rail car, nine foot wide, nothing fancy about it. Uh, I just picked it because it was you know, the model I had already open. And this is a pretty typical uh, precast abutment package, two rows. Um, won't go into a lot of details about these elements. I uh, just uh, want to focus on this this bearing assembly over here. Um, that's what this video is about. Um, so you can see that um, the uh, the yellow represents the neoprene pad, and the blue represents a steel pad. Um, now we sell both the neoprene pad and the steel pad, uh, or you can source them yourselves. Um, uh, let me um, let's get a few different views here. Um, I'm gonna do a top view, and so you, just so you can see what a what it looks like. There we go. Lower this down so you can just see the rail car, the top of the rail car, mostly gone. So you can see what that looks like. Um, and these are just uh, expansion anchor bolts, also called the red heads. Um, a few different terms that uh, that they're used. Uh, there are just four of them. Um, you do have to have some minimum edge distances between, you know, just, just that you have to have some meat here on that steel. Also on the rubber pad, I um, really can't give you the specifications here. Um, I don't want to be responsible or liable um, for giving you that and, and not working on your particular project, but um, uh, that's what it looks like. Um, the steel that we typically use, not, not to say that it's going to necessarily work on your site, uh, is one inch thick. Same thing with the neoprene pad. We use a one inch thick neoprene pad. Um, may not work on your site, but that's what we use on ours. Um, let me move this rail car out of the way. Just kind of slide it over. Um, actually, not, uh, so the first step we do whenever we're installing these is we'll actually... Um, so you have the steel plate here and you have the rubber pad. I'm just going to move this 24 inches, 24. I'm going to move this back 24 inches, 24. Okay, so the first thing we actually do uh, when these bolts aren't even here, um, I'm going to move these over. I'm going to move them over that way 48 inches. Okay, so we'll take the steel plate. Uh, even before the rail car arrives, we'll set the steel plate directly on the concrete. Um, so right now, as you, as you can see, there's nothing on the concrete. There is just a blank slate. Let me get this out of the way. That way, it doesn't confuse you. Move it over another 24 inches. So, so you'll have this concrete block just sitting there, um, and it can be our precast block. It can be your own precast block. It can be uh, a cast in place, whatever it may be. But you, you want to just plain flat top concrete, uh, nothing fancy. Then what you do is you'll set our neo our steel plate. Um, this particular one uh, is one foot. Um, let me pull some measurements for, it, for you here. So in this direction here, that's that's 12 inches, okay. Uh, and this one happens to be 36 inches. 36 may or may not work for your site. I don't know. Um, and this one is one inch thick as well. These slots, um, we generally like to see a one inch edge distance, okay. Same thing over here, about a, about a one inch edge distance. From here over here, about one inch. Uh, this slot's going to be about one inch, um, and the, the distance here, um, anywhere from two to three inches. Let me see what I actually have drawn this one. Uh, this here is two two inches here, so overall probably three inches on that. Um, and it's the same for all these all the way around. You got four of them. Okay, so we'll take that steel plate. Now, when you order it from us, it'll come already with these holes already pre-attached or pre-drilled. Um, and you'll set that right down on top of the concrete. <clears throat> then um, you'll start drilling the holes for the uh, for these expansion anchor bolts. So these four bolts here, you'll drill the holes for these um, right inside the hole. So you'll drill, drill right to the steel plate. Um, once you've got those holes drilled, you'll want to move. Th this plate's really heavy. It's one inch thick, so it's pretty heavy. So once you got the holes drilled, you want to clean them out. You, you'll need to blow them out. Uh, you want to get the holes really clean. Uh, you typically want to drill down about uh, six to eight inches. Um, once you got that drilled, you'll move this out of the way. Okay. 
then you'll set this rubber pad. It's actually it's a federal grade neoprene pad. Uh, you'll set that right right over the holes. Your holes already be lined up, and then you'll set this right on top. You'll set that right on top. Oops, it's kind of weird. Just like that. Okay. Um, and then you'll put your four bolts. Oh, come on. Okay. Right inside, uh, 48 inches. Okay. And then you'll want to tighten down your concrete anchor bolts. Um, we generally like to use three quarter inch by 10 inch anchor bolts, uh, redheads, whatever you want to call them. Uh, if you don't know how to use anchor bolts, talk to your bolt supplier. Um, they're, they're pretty simple to use. You don't have to torque them down or anything. Uh, you want to get them about finger tight plus another half turn, uh, and that's it. It's not. You, you don't need to torque them down really tight. Um, uh, and once you do that, you're ready to go. So you want you'll want to you'll want your concrete to look like this days before. Um, the bridge even arrives. It'll just look just like that. Okay, the, the steel will just be sitting there waiting for the rail car to arrive. Now, once the rail car arrives, you'll you'll bring it in. You'll set the rail car. You know, you got you got the crane. Um, the crane brings the rail car in. It, it sets it down on this neoprene pad. Okay, I'm not going to talk about you know how far it needs to go. That that that's a whole different subject. Um, so once you got that that uh, that rail car, the center beam here sitting on the um, Sitting on the concrete, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut that away again so we can talk about um, what this is supposed to look like and where to weld this thing to. Come on. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, on all these 90 foot long rail cars, the distance between this flange. To this flange is generally 24 inches not not exactly not always but generally 24 inches this one happens to be 24 and 3 16 of an inch so uh, there, there are little variations um, you'll want to weld once you got the rail car sitting on the steel plate you'll want to send the crane home you don't need the crane sitting around waiting for you to do this there is access um, once you got the crane here even though this is kind of this end is kind of closed off because the steel plate you can get up underneath here and poke your head up up in this little pocket here uh, and you'll be able to, to gain access to, to these welds but you'll want to weld right inside here same thing right here okay and you'll want to weld right across here as well okay you don't really need to weld the bottom over here this little bottom where, where it comes across you do not need to weld that um, you really just need to weld uh, so you have one foot Two foot, two foot, three foot, four foot of weld, and you're done. Uh, then you want to check your bolts again because you just put 42,000 pounds of weight on on this neoprene pad, even though it's like a 50 or 60 durometer neoprene pad. Um, it, it shouldn't really compress, but maybe it does, and you maybe you bounce the bridge around a little bit. So just check your bolts a little bit, just snug them up, um, um, and that's really all there is to it. The other issue that uh, that we hear people uh, want us to talk about is the side sill um, and what do we do with our side sills what do I do with my model when it doesn't want to hey there we go um, the side sill is this area actually I'm going to do another cutaway and just cut away the front of this that way we can kind of see what I'm talking about over here okay the side sill is this piece right here, okay? Um, and it doesn't matter if uh, if the side sill is a slightly above the deck or below the deck, like this one is. Uh, it's the same same issue. Uh, a lot of people believe that they really want to support the side sill here. They believe that you know the rail car is going to kind of rock side to side if they don't support this. Now our engineers insist that that's not going to happen. However, um, customer is always right. If the customer feels that, then we're going to address it. So we usually just address those issues. It uh, doesn't cost much more money to do it. It's pretty simple. All we do is come inside here, and uh, whatever gap that is, we just shim it with a piece of steel, and we weld it. You know, we weld it back over here, or you just find something to to, to shim this up. Um, 
It's really not doing much, but um, if the client feels like they want to do it, well, let's go ahead and do it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, we can use a neoprene pad there. Those neoprene pads, since they're ASHTO approved, are pretty expensive. Um, if we have some spare pieces, we can usually send them for free, but uh, right now we're pretty, well, we're usually pretty low on neoprene pads uh, because they're so expensive. We don't like to have a whole bunch of spare pieces, you know, drops sitting around. Um, and that's all there is to it. Um, Well, you can, if you're done listening to this, if that's all you want to know, you can go ahead and shut the video off. I'm just going to, if you care to know what this rail car looks like, um, some people like these videos. Um, you can kind of watch along, I'll pan some more. Um, you can see you got you got plenty of room here to get your head up inside there um, to, to weld. It's not fun, um, but we've done it several times. Now, sometimes you have, you do have situations, well, hopefully you stuck around, but I do want to show you something now sometimes you have a situation where like your your soils are way over here let's say you know let's say you have um and your banks start going down um, let me just draw this kind of like this so let's say you have um bear with me let me let me just draw a bank real quick so let's say this is your bank and uh and it's so you don't have a whole bunch of room so your bank kind of does this all right, and you're thinking, well, how am I going to get up inside there? You know, it's I can't reach, and th this space here isn't wide enough. You can still, um, there's still a, a cavity there. You do have this arm here. Um, you can try to just squeeze inside here, uh, and we've done it. You know, hopefully, you have a skinny welder that can get it inside here and and weld. You know, you'll weld this right over here, and then you'll back up a little bit. Um, and then you'll squeeze underneath here. Um, well, this this cavity is the same thing. You can just uh, you can see there's just a pocket there, a pocket. You can just crawl up inside this cavity right here. All of them have these little cavities. Uh, you can get up inside and weld. Okay. Um, if for some reason you can't do that, let's say you, they're just um, let's say for some reason your bank you know is way up here for some reason. Um, not a very good bank, but let's say your bank is there and you can't, you just can't do it. Okay. Um, what you can do is just cut holes in in this end plate here. You have to weld those end plates back on. So try to keep your hole as small as possible, um, but you can, and it'll essentially look like, um, you know, just like we did a few minutes ago, where we just take this. Oops, sorry about that. Um, we take this and we just cut cut that end plate out and then we can gain access um, to weld these from this side. Um, these inside pockets are kind of tough, especially because you do have to use a stick welder. Um, sometimes you have to bend your rod and yeah, you won't use up your entire rod because your flux is damaged, but um, that's what you have to do sometimes to, to weld these in place. Okay, that is definitely it as far as how to do this. Um, let me get rid of that and if you want, oh, kind of show you around this rail car and what these things look like. Uh, so people like to see these models. You know, you do have all rail cars have these um, these cross members here. Um, they have the kickers there. Um, pretty standard looking rail car. Other than the same thing. This is a center plate. This is where the, the wheels would originally go. Um, yeah, okay, that's it. I'll be quiet. Thanks. Bye.